buddy. That's how you come back from the All-Star break. Who'd have thought all this time all you had to do to win was call up the Marley? I know. Imagine how good they'd be if they called up the Solar Bears. Hi! Leafs Nation, Dan Witness, Bronson Lucas, Paul Biblical, Austin Matthews is the lead! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully, mostly. Are you in? Puppies, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's see, that's the problem with shooting night video. Oh, Charlie, you're just okay. Fine. Oh, yeah. Give me the death stare. Hi, my name's Steve Dangle, and in the time it's taken you to watch this video so far, another Leaf has scored their first career in a jungle. Leafs win five to nothing. Go ahead, rewind it back. Make sure you heard it right. I, actually, you know what? Here, I'll say it again. Leafs win five. Nothing over the New York Islanders. And I am so happy. Dude, I am beat. I am so beat. I'm so tired. This wimpy blogger boy had to help move his buddy out of a place and then into his new place. And I'm just completely beat. How the hell did people do that for a living? And then I'm obviously making a night LFR video because, again, the Leafs play tomorrow. We're recording a brand new Panago Pizza Steve Dangle podcast tomorrow. Oh, Steve, you're going to record during the game? No, we're recording at 9 in the morning with Chris Johnston. So we got to talk about the Leafs kicking some Brooklyn but and then hopefully get some sleep. Despite being this tired, I am extremely happy with the Leafs performance, which is why I'm going to save the happiness and let's go with Islanders fans, if I were you. So I often think that the if I were you segment is a little soft at times. When the opposing team beats the Leafs, I go, gosh, you're good. When the Leafs beat the opposing team, I usually say, yeah, but you're not that bad. Come on. Islanders fans, this is one of those rare occasions where I say, if I were you, I would be pissed and not only pissed, but scared. Because let's start with the good stuff. Uh, you have John Tavares. Anders Lee, Josh Bailey is having an incredible season, Jordan Everly is having an incredible season, and he's on a line with Beauvillier, and Barzal is probably going to win Calder Trophy, Rookie of the Year. Try to find a better one-two punch in terms of lines. Try to find a better top six in hockey right now. You're going to have a difficult time, and the New York Islanders are wasting it. Islanders are only one point out of a playoff spot. They have 55 points. The Flyers have 56. But the Islanders have played two more games than the Blue Jackets, Flyers, and Rangers. All teams above them in the standings. Actually, not just in the wild card picture, in the Metro. Carolina, who is right behind you, has also played two fewer games. And even teams like Detroit and Florida, who are nine points behind you, have played four fewer games. This is a reminder, Leafs fans, we are not allowed to say that the Leafs are bad defensively ever again. Because even though the Leafs just shut them out, the Isles have the second most goals in the NHL with 173. The Lightning, who lead the league, only have three more than the Islanders. Want to take a guess at what the Islanders' goal differential is? I'll give you a second to guess. Minus 16! They've allowed 189 goals the most goals in the entire National Hockey League, the Arizona Coyotes, who are the second worst team in that category, have allowed 172. That's 17 fewer. And my question is, how has Garth Snow not made a move? Yaroslav Alak has a 909 save percentage in 34 games. That's not great, but it's not abysmal, I guess. For Thomas Grice, though, in 22 games, he's an 887. Get off the ice, dude. And the crazy thing is, those are the only two goalies the Islanders have used this season. Alright, so they got two bad goalies. What's the problem? This is a potential friend franchise defining season. That's why my stress level would be up here if I was an Islanders fan. Is John Tavares going to stay? That's the big question. I got to imagine missing the playoffs would make that a lot less likely. Here's what you sell Johnny on. Johnny, we got a couple big injuries on the back end. Grice won't be this bad next year and Halak will probably be gone. Garth Snow will strap on his cartoonishly large pads and strap himself to the goalpost if he has to. He'll probably be better. You got those Calgary picks? That's good. Please stay. Sweating. Islanders fans, sweating. That's what I'd be doing if I were you. Now the Leafs, wow, this is a very open and shut case, is it not? The Leafs outshot the Islanders 18 to 14 in the third period, a period where the Islanders were getting creamed. 19 to 11 in the second where the Leafs were winning that game. And 13 to three in the first. Did the Islanders even show up? Remember how last video where I was like, hmm, I can't tell if the Dallas Stars played bad or the Leafs played good or both. This game just felt mean. But five and a half minutes in, Kasperi Kapanen is showing why he's a permanent NHL player, using speed and skill to get in. In there and then just getting a goal that's banging away. His third of the season, not bad for a guy who's barely in here and for a guy who's been playing on the fourth line and the Leafs lead 1-0. I'm really liking that fourth line of Komarov, Dominic Moore, and Kasperi Kapanen. To Dominic Moore's credit, I think the speed that Kapanen brings to that line really brings out the better qualities in Moore. Like, no one's going to confuse Dominic Moore with Austin Matthews or Nazem Kadri, but the one thing the guy can do is skate. A few minutes later, Gardner, ridiculous pass to Hyman on the breakaway! Oh, he's poke check. But the puck gets on Austin Matthews, sticking Thomas Rice is like, <laughs> His 23rd of the season and the Leafs are up 2-0. Zach Hyman with an assisted a great effort on the play even though he didn't pass it. Unless he meant to do that and it's sick. But Gardner with the outlet pass on that play, he gets the assist. Guess which assist that is on the season for him. Dude, his 27th. This is what I'm talking about. Gardner is on a 6 game point streak and on this 6 game point streak, he has 
10 points. They're all assists, but hey, he's a defender. Only two of those points, by the way, have been on the power play, which means he's doing his damage at even strength. Eight even strength assists over the last six games. Are you kidding me? And I still get people going, oh, see, he drives me nuts. Dude, me too, but look, do you not see? Second period, Mitch Marner getting tired of setting up his new line mate Nazem Kadri all the time. They decide to switch roles. Kadri to Marner, goal. Marner getting pretty good at this goal scoring thing. That line getting pretty good at this goal scoring thing, and the Leafs have a 3 nothing lead. Which brings us to the first a thon. Travis Dermott, buzz, 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 but he doesn't get the goal. Aw. Oh. But he has the sense to see that the puck is about to end up on Willie Nylander's stick. I better go to the net. Willie passes. Travis buries his first career NHL goal. That wily old gray beard Austin Matthews going to the net for the puck. And the greatest thing about that goal is, you know, sometimes we think like professional athletes are, are, are above us. No, no, a lot of them are just like you and me. Because you know how I would react if I scored my first career NHL goal? It'd probably be something like... <laughs> And then they showed his dad, and there was a tear, and after the game, they show him with his dad. Hockey, it gives you feelings. There's your new slogan, NHL. Third period, they're just having a laugh at this point. Justin Hall, who, by the way, is playing in this game, streaks down the wing, shoots, and oh, come on. Everyone's like, his first career NHL goal, he did it too. And I'm just sitting there being a party pooper, like, oh my god, somebody pull Grice. Actually, don't. He's not on my team. They show this on the Sportsnet broadcast, but I'm doing it too. Garrett Sparks' tweet, hashtag Bell Let's Talk about the journey Justin Hall has had to make to the NHL. From starting in the ECHL to being an all-star with the Toronto Marlies, he's earned every opportunity he's gotten with a smile on his face the whole way. Teammates like him are why I love playing the game. And he is legitimately an amazing story. 2010 second round pick of the Blackhawks, but then was basically a cast off. Wallowed in the minors, went to the ECHL, finally signing an AHL contract with the Toronto Marlies. Shout out Kyle Dubas. Turns out he's pretty good. Shout out Kyle Dubas. And they sign him to an NHL deal. Yes, all three of Morgan Ryan. Roman Polak and Ron Hainsey had to be out, but Justin Hall earned this opportunity. Heck, just last week, Renat Valiev was up. Remember that? Well, Hall's been busting his ass. He went to the AHL All-Star Game and he earned this opportunity. And look what he did. And I'm going to wrap it up here because Mrs. Dangle has to work in the morning. There's obviously much more to talk about it, but let's save it because they got another game tomorrow night against the Rangers. And there's going to be a podcast with a Leafs reporter tomorrow morning. Final thoughts, yeah, the Islanders stunk. They were bad, but... Leafs made them look bad. And this was a big test. The Leafs were ripe for the taking. Even though the Islanders had played the night before, they know how to score goals. They had the second most in the NHL. And the Leafs' decor in this one was Jake Gardner, Zaitsev, who has missed 17 games, three rookies, and a sophomore. And they passed, which I think highlights the depth of the Leafs' organization. What the Penguins have proven over and over again is you need to be comfortable with your call-ups if you're going to make a deep run. I'm comfortable with these guys, man. Even if the Leafs make an addition, which, which is awesome, Someone's bound to get hurt. I'm happy with one of these guys stepping in. Questions so quickly. Is Hall potentially a better fit on this Leafs team than Carrick? That's a very interesting question. I'm, I'm going to calm you down there because he played one game and got a goal. I think I know what you mean. Like, Carrick, I, I'm not even really sure exactly what his style is, but Hall, you, you know his style. He's moving. I'm not ready to dub him as a better option than Carrick just yet, but uh, I see what you mean. He's a good option. If the Leafs' offense was a wrestling finisher, what finisher would it be and why? I'm going to go with Rey Mysterio 619. It's super flashy, his opponents often reverse it on him, but when he pulls it off, it looks super sick. Also, he's a little water bug. Are you staying at my place for the stadium series game? Ah, uh, dude, I don't even know if I'm going to that thing. I, I haven't heard anything. Uh, it'd be nice. Let's end with this one. Have you stopped smiling? Because I haven't. My face hurts. I have not stopped smiling. I hope you don't stop smiling. May your face always hurt. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends uh, Big Steve Dangle Podcast tomorrow with Chris Johnston. Shout out to Mrs. Dangle, you're a lovely, understanding person, and I love you. I'm sorry.